Come, Nerevar. Let me tell you about my creatures again. The Antitremata are a rather successful clade on a planet as harsh as Mars. Perhaps their most successful class are the so-called Periostraca. These differ greatly from both the Ortholetha and the ancestral Cecil forms of the phylum. In the Periostraca, the ancestral valves have lost their clam-like opening mechanism and instead fused together to form a carapace not unlike that of a tortoise. As the name implies, this carapace has been partially internalized by being overgrown by a thick periostracum, a type of skin common to shelled animals. The stalk has also given up its anchoring function and has instead become a muscular tail. Its cuticle has evolved into solid rings, making it resemble the exoskeletal tails of crustaceans. In some periostracans, the tail bears protective setae. Remaining inside the carapace are only three permanent openings, out of which highly modified lophophores emerge. Two on the side have lost all feeding function and have instead become legs. Unlike in ortholiths, these limbs are not exoskeletal, but are instead supported by an internal apatitic skeleton, making them resemble more the limbs of vertebrates. At the front, above the cloaca, extends a muscular proboscis, likely homologous to that seen in other antitrimatans. It is rather flexible and supported by an endoskeleton. Some periostracans are capable of retracting the proboscis into the shell, much like a turtle. At the end of the proboscis is a genuine jaw. It is composed of large tooth-like elements called scolecodonts that have fused together into a beak, similar to the jaws of polycate worms or catungnaths. Behind the beak, four openings represent sense organs tasked with hearing, smelling, and breathing. The pseudo-head at the end of the neck contains neither a brain nor eyes. These are instead located inside or on top of a bulge growing out the front of the dorsal valve. Periostracans seem to have evolved their eyes independently from ortholiths and shilubim, as they are not soft eyes growing from the fleshy mantle, but instead complex mineral structures directly embedded into the shell. These likely evolved out of rock eyes similar to those seen on the chiton slug from Earth. Periostracans generally have six eyes, likely due to those eyes' immobility. Two simple ones at the back of the cranial bulge to look backwards, and two complex ones with an hourglass-shaped pupil at the front. Many also have an additional simple pair on the bottom valve between the legs and the proboscis. In some species, such as the fat-tailed Kratok seen here, the brain under the cranial bulge can reach reptilian levels of relative size. This is more than enough to stalk through the desert sands in search of soft-bodied prey. Here it is seen cutting into a firm, a hairy desert diplognathan. The Kratox, being an ectothermic egg-laying ambush predator, often hides beneath the sands waiting for prey to crawl by. Apart from circulates, it also feeds on smaller onychognaths, dust slugs, and trichodates. Itself, it is preyed on by larger onychognaths and periostracans, which the pointy setae on its tail help defend against. When feeling threatened by astronauts, it emits a frog-like reverberating chirp and prominently waves its tail at them. Why the Kratox has such a fat tail compared to other periostracans is not known. Possibly under the Tunisine rings it hides fat and water reserves for hard times, of which there are many on Mars. If it walks like a duck and quacks like a duck, it might still be a Martian. Benis are members of a fascinating clade of more derived periostracans, the Nothornitha, which evolved a warm-blooded metabolism and have learned to walk in an erect gait on their hands. Their periostracum has grown even thicker than in primitive relatives like the Kratox, and, to better conserve body heat, has developed a short pelt of hair-like fibers, similar to those found on the shells of some earth gastropods. This further conceals the form and sutures of the underlying skeleton, which is more like that of a lophophoran than a vertebrate. The lesser Bennu is a chicken-sized omnivore that wanders through the shrublands and steppes in search of anything edible, which it cracks open with its fairly robust beak. Its tunicine tail is curiously strongly reduced, though it still sports bristles. Despite its bird-like physique, it is a largely silent animal, capable of only faint hisses and snorts. Most of the communication is instead done over the striped dewlap hanging from the proboscis and sounds made by clapping the scolecodont beak. When encountered by our astronauts, these benis show little fear and are rather inquisitive. The Portuguese may have observed similar behavior when first encountering the dodo. 
Curiously, though, Benis do have natural predators, so it remains mysterious why they show no fear response to humans. I hope you enjoyed this video and look forward to the coming ones. Make sure to like and subscribe, visit the project's original website, and maybe also check out my Patreon, Yunwa. There you may get to view the next videos early.